Today, my friend, I want to talk to you about five keys to kingdom multiplication. Five keys to kingdom multiplication. Do you need multiplication in your life? Do you need increase? And I'm not only talking about financial increase, but I'm talking about multiplication of the intimacy you have with Jesus, multiplication and increase of the relationships in your life that are good quality, solid covenant relationships, increase and multiplication of the love in your marriage and the intimacy in your marriage. How about increase and multiplication in your career opportunities? And yes, indeed, in your bank account. Do you need multiplication? Do you need increase? Do you need opportunity? If so, I want to share five keys that will help you today from the Word of God. Let's go immediately to the Word. We are reading today in John chapter 6, verses 1 through 14. And this passage is short. I'm going to read it to you just so we'll be on the same page about these five keys. This is what it says. It's the story of Jesus feeding over 5,000 people by multiplying five barley loaves and two small fish. The passage says this. After these things, Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. Then a great multitude followed him because they saw his signs, which he performed on those who were diseased. And Jesus went up on the mountain and there he sat with his disciples. Now the Passover, the feast of the Jews was near. Then Jesus lifted up his eyes and seeing a great multitude coming toward him, he said to Philip, where shall we buy bread that these may eat? But this he said to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, 200 denarii worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may have a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a lad here who has five barley loaves and two small fish, but what are they among so many? Then Jesus said, Make the people sit down. Now there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down in number about 5,000. Keep in mind that only is the men reference there. So we have thousands potentially of women and children with these men. And Jesus took the loaves and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to the disciples and the disciples to those sitting down and likewise of the fish as much as they wanted. So when they were filled, he said to his disciples, gather up the fragments that remain so that nothing is lost. Therefore, they gathered them up and filled 12 baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves, which were left over by those who had eaten. Then those men, when they had seen the sign that Jesus did, said, This is truly the prophet who is to come into the world. Amen. Okay, let's talk about these five kingdom keys of multiplication and increase that we see in this passage today. Number one. In whatever situation you need increase today, wherever you need multiplication from the Lord, I want you to know today that Jesus already knows what he will do. As it said in this passage, in verse 6, he himself knew what he would do. My friend, God has solutions for you. He has already written every day of your life in his book. God has known you in his own mind and in his own heart, in his bosom since eternity passed, because God has never learned anything. And so, my friend, God knows right now exactly how he's going to help you. He already has a plan. He sees the door he's going to open. He sees the help he's going to send. He is the Lord of hosts, and he is activating his angel armies on your behalf right now, if you will just believe him. My friend, God is your ever-present help in time of trouble, and nothing is a mystery to him. Nothing is beyond his capacity to help you with, but he knows the end from the beginning. And right now he is on his way to rescue you. God already knows what he will do for you. Jesus has a plan for your life, for your problem, for the help that you need, for the provision you need right now. That's key number one. Now, key number two is this. Even though he knows what he will do, God will test you anyway. My friend, we have to be aware that every time we have an opportunity to get promoted in the kingdom, a test will come. A test will come. Now, that doesn't mean it's going to be a hard test, but the Lord will give you an opportunity to stand in your faith, to stand on his word, and to show him 
that you do trust him. He'll give you an opportunity to grow by saying, I know in whom I have believed and I know that he is able to keep that which I have committed to him. So don't be dismayed when tests and trials come. The test comes only to give you an opportunity to grow. God only sends you to war when he wants you to win a battle. God sent David out against Goliath. Why? Because God was prepared to elevate David to be the chieftain and eventually the king over all of Israel. That happened because David was willing to take a test, to face a challenge. My friend, are you facing a challenge right now? I want you to know that that challenge is an opportunity for you to show God that you still believe, for you to stand in your faith. And when you do, here comes God with a miracle. When you say, God, I trust you and I will not back down. Here I stand. I can do no other. Oh, those are words that God can work with, my friend. Those are words and attitudes that God can work with. He will move on your behalf. Now, key number three is rest. Rest. Isn't it interesting that when Jesus prepared to do a miracle in the face of total lack, he said, tell the people to sit down. Tell the people to sit down. He didn't say, tell the people to all go out and see if they can find a happy meal. He didn't say, tell the people to go out and see if they can scrounge up a fish from the lake for themselves. We'll give them an hour and a half for a lunch break. No, he looked at the disbelief of his disciples and he looked at what men considered to be the utter lack of provision. And he said, tell the people to sit down because I've got a plan. And so my friend, right now, I want you to know that you can rest today. You can rest. God wants you to rest. He knows the end from the beginning and he knows how he's going to help you. But my friend, we have to figure out that we cannot help ourselves. Yes, we have to be diligent. Yes, we have to activate the promises and our faith has to work because faith without works is dead. But when it comes right down to it, as Jesus said, without God, we can do nothing. So if you have a need today, sit down, trust God, pray, ask, speak the word of God over your situation, do whatever the Lord tells you to do. But my friend, rest, rest and wait on the Lord. That is a key to kingdom multiplication because it shows that we trust him. It shows that when we put our faith in God, we don't have to go try in the flesh to do something other than what he has told us to do. And he'll lead you. Whatever you need to do, he'll lead you from a place of rest. Now, key number four is thanksgiving and your verbal confession of faith. I find it so interesting that when Jesus received the barley loaves and the fish, he immediately gave thanks to God. Why? Because he had that intimate relationship. He already knew that God was going to move on his behalf, that God the Father was sitting there eagerly waiting to show his glory. And God is waiting to show his glory in your life too. And he's about to break through right now. I speak that over your life. But Jesus gave thanks and he confessed his faith. Thanksgiving is such a key to kingdom multiplication. When you give thanks, it increases your ability to receive from the Lord. It sets you in a posture that is pleasing to the Father. It's like turning yourself into an open basket because the Lord says, open your mouth wide that I may fill it. Well, that opening your mouth wide is giving thanks unto the Lord. And it's also confessing your faith. In the Bible, the Greek word for faith actually means both the inner belief in a thing and the verbal confession of that thing. So Jesus, he said, thank you, Father. He thanked the Lord. Why? Because he already knew it was going to happen. He confessed his faith by thanksgiving. I challenge you to do the same thing today. I challenge you to speak your faith out, to say, my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I challenge you to say, I have been young and now I'm older and I have not seen the righteous forsaken nor his offspring begging bread. I challenge you to say, I wait on the Lord. I am of good courage and he strengthens my heart. I challenge you to say, all of my desires matter to God and God is perfecting the things that concern me right now. Speak your faith out. When you do that, 
You activate the angels because the angels move in response to the word of God, whether it comes out of your mouth or someone else's mouth. And when you speak your faith, it pleases the Father. And remember, Jesus continually said in his time here on earth, according to your faith, be it unto you. That is both the inner understanding and belief and your verbal confession. Both are required. Now, key number five to multiplication and increase today is your expectation. My friends, you have to know that God is moving to work on your behalf. Right now, he is moving. And you have to know that even if you don't see it yet, breakthrough is still happening in the spirit realm. It's still coming because if you pray, Jesus says, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be open to you. That's Matthew chapter 7, 7 through 11. Ask and you shall receive. So God's word is true. God's word is final. And if you have asked, you do have it. You have what you have received. So my friend, these five keys today activated in your life will bring the manifestation of the thing that you're believing for. You recognize God already has a plan. You recognize that his test may come, but you stand firm in your faith. You stand firm on the word of God, even during a test. You rest in the Lord and in his word. You speak your faith. You confess your thanksgiving to the Lord and you speak the word of God over your situation. And finally, you expect him to show up and show out and move on your behalf, knowing that if you have asked, you already have received. Even if you don't see it yet, it's coming. It's there. Just keep on asking and thanking the Lord. It's going to show up soon.